Hey there, I'm super excited about this episode. Mission Control is finally publicly available. It has some bugs, but they will get fixed very quickly, I'm sure. But Mission Control Jobs is the first version of Mission Control that um, DHH announced at Rails World 2023. So what's interesting is this is called Mission Control Dash Jobs, meaning that we'll probably see other Mission Control features in the future. So the way to set this up is you add Mission Control Jobs to your gem file, and then you add this line to your routes file to get started. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna say bundle add, mission under control mission underscore control dash jobs uh, and you will run that and then I'm going to run the rails server which I have a rails application here that we created in the solid queue episode that has solid queue installed and it is set up as the puma plugin to run it automatically so if we open up puma.rb you'll see here the uh, solid queue plugin this is going to run solid queue whenever Puma starts up and shuts down, it will automatically shut down Solid Queue for us as well. So that is all you need to do to set up uh, mission control jobs. So here, if we run our Rails application, we can then go to our routes file and we can add that line here to mount the mission control engine. Um, we can also, if you were using device, use authenticated user do around this in order to uh, check and see if the user is logged in and then allow this route to be accessed. Um, otherwise, if a user is not logged in, it will just 404. So this is a handy way of adding authentication to the mission control route, um, but you can also add authentication to the controller with some configuration if you're using something else that doesn't have these routing helpers um, but I find these really useful because I don't have to go add any configuration for it. It's just done here in my routes file. So once that is added, we do not have device on here, so we're just going to leave those commented out. But now we can add or access the jobs route. And you can see I've been playing with this a little bit. We have the default queue, which is going to be, of course, uh, created by default if you haven't specified the exact queues you want. We have some jobs. I was playing with this a month ago with Solid Q, but we've also got the jobs I was playing with um, a little bit ago. So we can see here the workers that are connected. I have my one worker that is set up by Puma um, and running here. It is connected. Last heartbeat was one minute ago. We can refresh and see if that updates or anything. But um, this is mission control jobs. So if we were to run a job in our Rails console or something, um, we can say Rails console, and we can open up, um, say, I have some examples here, but if we wanna say, let's send a mailer with a post in it, we can do that. It will enqueue the job, mail delivery job. Um, we get all that information there, and then we can refresh our UI. We have an in-progress job, that action mailer, mail delivery job, uh, running by worker 26, less than 20 seconds ago. If we refresh this, it should be done, and it was successful, and we have that here under finished jobs, which is awesome. We can click on the jobs and see the arguments, the job ID, which queue it was, when it was in queue, when it was finished, and we can see all the raw data for it. So this is handy to see your arguments so we can tell what job class it was, what was the ID, um, any of our arguments. So we had the user mailer, the receipt method, we have deliver now, we have params. So this has converted the um, post instant into a global ID. It also knows that there are symbols that we want for our hash keys. And because we have to convert this to JSON to store in the database, um, this has a special representation for those and it says, hey, inside params there is a post key, but we want to convert that to a symbol when we turn it back into a Ruby hash. So this is all super useful information. Um, and I wanted to point out that if we were to make a mistake in our user mailer, like we reference a variable that does not exist, and we go back to our terminal and try it again, uh, we might want to reload. So we have, uh, or I guess the job probably is going to be um, queued with the bad logic. There we go, we have a new failed job. Uh, less than a minute ago, this active 
delivery or mail delivery job has failed. Um, and what's nice is it keeps track of the error information, so the type, the message, and the backtrace. So we can see here user mailer line 11 in the receipt method called an undefined local variable or method ASDF, which is correct. And we can then fix that and then retry our job. Now, unfortunately, the current version of mission control has a bug in it. Um, and so retry does not actually work. That will be fixed very shortly. I reported that already and we'll probably make a pull request for it as well, but that will be fixed very soon. Um, other things to look at here are, there's not a whole lot, but if you type jobs help in your Rails console, you will see this output here that says, you can connect to a job server with connect to app ID and server ID. And it will print out examples down here. Um, what's missing, I made a pull request for this already, is the double quotes around this. I was a little confused by that. Um, and they don't have to have the app ID and colon on this. Um, or the server ID, I guess. Uh, this is probably the app ID. But you can say connect to double quotes and give it a string and use one of the available job servers that it lists out here that will list all of the job servers that are connected to your database from what I can tell. And then it will have you connected to that where you can then say active job dot jobs and you can see jobs um, loaded from the database. Now we don't have any uh, jobs running or whatever, so this is basically giving us nothing, but um, you will be able to access those. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can call to uh, view those jobs. So this is kind of the interface that it uses to grab that for the UI because this actually supports Rescue, which stores things in Redis, but SolidQue stores them in your database. So it has a flexible backend to talk to those different services. So you can imagine that eventually we will probably have one for uh, integration for Sidekick and Good Job and Q and all the other ones out there, they will just need to interface with this, um, and that will be pretty much it. Uh, so this is cool. You can access the failed jobs. So if we want to do that, we can pop that in here um, and see those, and then basically query those pending jobs for a specific queue and so on. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, lots of things that you might want to do with those. But um, in general, you probably won't mess with that much. The UI is really the bread and butter here of uh, mission control jobs. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of curious if we were to open up the Rails console and just call active job jobs, what happens? I guess that method is defined when you connect it to one of the job servers. So that is probably why. Or if we say jobs help. Yeah, so undefined method um, that must be defined dynamically when we connect. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if there's a disconnect method. I would assume there is, but it may just not, not be documented or whatever. But um, that's pretty cool. A little handy helper there for accessing your job servers and getting into the weeds a little bit. So that is mission control uh, jobs. I assume that's a hint that there will be much more cool things for mission control in the future. Um, but this is what was announced and it works great. Uh, I love using solid queue to store my jobs in the back end, but I don't even have to worry about managing another process because of the Puma plugin. Um, this is going to be a great way um, to, to run jobs in the future in your applications without a separate service since it just takes advantage of the database you're already using. So that is it for this episode. Uh, there's really not a lot to it. This is um, it. You have access to talk to the active job jobs if you want, but that is about it. It's a great little UI interface you can add to your Rails applications today. So that's it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below, and we will talk to you in the next one. Peace.